Hey there everyone and thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode of My Orchid Adventures and today we are going to be focused on my most favorite Robros in the entire Bromeliad galaxy and these are the Cryptanthus Bromeliads also known as the Earth Star. <laughs> And they do call these bromeliads the earth star for the simple fact of the beautiful way that the leaves grow on this bromeliad, giving it quite a beautiful, lovely star-shaped quality. And also for the fact that these can be found growing within the earth because these are true terrestrial bromeliads. So unlike your bromeliads that are epiphytic, you will not find these growing within trees or other vegetation, but instead you will find these growing within the rain forest soil. Now what I do love most about the Cryptanthus bromeliad is the fact that they come in so many different varieties. It is said that they actually have about a thousand different varieties of these Cryptanthus and as you can see they come in all sorts of shades and colors and also many different types of patterns as well giving such a beautiful and tropically delicious display. Now something that is quite interesting about these types of bromeliads and also other types of bromeliads as well is the fact that the colors can actually be affected by the amount of lighting that it gets. So if the bromeliad is in lighter or darker conditions that can actually determine the shades and the colors that the bromeliads will give off. Now the sizes of the cryptanthus if you can see right here they're not very large at all and they're actually starting from your more smaller varieties to your more medium size and this one right here is on the larger side of things and as you can see right there it's not that large at all so they don't get too big of a size where you can't handle them. Here's a fun fact about the Cryptanthus and also the way that it got its name. So when this bromeliad reaches a mature size it will set off its bloom and the blooms will actually come from the center of the plant and sometime deep within the plant as you can see right there and because the blooms are so small and inconspicuous you may not even know that it's in bloom because the flowers are hidden hence the name cryptanthus which means you guessed it hidden flower and once the bromeliad does come into full maturity you will find that it will give off its once in a lifetime blooms because these blooms these flowers only will bloom once in a lifespan and after that you will find it oftentimes will throw off its babies also known as its pups and speaking of pups oh my goodness look at the potential and the tremendous amount of pups that these cryptanthus can give. Oh my goodness. Like totally wowzer folks. Unbelievable amount. And the most incredible thing about it is it can actually give these pups throughout this entire bromeliad from the tops to the very base. So you will have the option of either dividing them out and having so many pups, so many individual baby bromeliads, or you can opt to display them incredibly in this manner right here where it'll just be a beautiful, fantastic display of so many bromeliads. And if you do elect to propagate the little baby pup, the rule of thumb is that the pup should be at least a quarter of the size of the mother before you propagate it. And all you would simply do is take a hold of the little baby pup, you would twist it a little bit, and you would pull. There you go. And there it is. There's the little guy right here. You would allow the wound area to dry for a couple of days and then once it's done that you would go ahead and simply pot it up. That simple guys, that easy and it's potted. Now it may take about a month before this actually begins to grow its roots so I wouldn't recommend moving about because as you can see it is quite wobbly and you definitely want it to become established. So again, it can take about a month, so definitely do not panic, do not fret. 
if you don't see any roots on it. It's just a matter of being patient. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the care tips and guide of these amazing bromeliads. So as previously stated, these are coming from jungle-like conditions, from the rainforest type of areas. These are coming from an area with high humidity, high moisture. Also understanding because they are terrestrial and growing within the soil of the rainforest, they are also getting a good amount of shading or nice canopy where they are getting indirect light, dappled, or even moderate or even more of a shaded light condition. So the variation of light conditions that these cryptanthus can actually handle and tolerate would be from your shadier condition to your moderate and dappled lighting, even up to your higher light, just as long as it is filtered and diffused. These are your terrestrial growing bromeliads, which means that they can really appreciate very light, very airy type of soil. Understanding that too much water retention can cause rotting and fatality to the bromeliad, so it is very important that the soil has very good drainage. Surprisingly, the Cryptanthus bromeliad can tolerate quite a variety of different types of temperatures and can even be quite forgiving to colder weather. And just as long as the weather does not reach freezing conditions, believe it or not, these tough guys right here can weather the storm. But the temperatures that they are known to flourish in is between 65 to 80 degrees. Now these bromeliads right here can really appreciate being able to stay evenly moist. They don't like being waterlogged and they don't like going bone dry. So as a rule of thumb and just depending on your location, you can water these about once or twice a week and that should be sufficient. And as I did mention, these types of bromeliads right here can appreciate a high level of humidity and also moisture. So if you are keeping this indoors, I would recommend not keeping it anywhere where it gets too drafty or a whole lot of airflow and definitely not underneath any type of vent because that can cause a drying effect to the bromeliad. And if you do notice any of your bromeliads getting a little bit too crisp or a little bit too dry, you can also keep a spray bottle on hand and give it a spritz every so now and again just to keep it refreshed. And as far as fertilizers for these guys, these are not picky eaters at all. You can use general fertilizer or you can use fertilizers for your orchids. You can use slow release fertilizer. I mean, it almost seems like anything goes with these guys just as long as you don't overdo it. And there you have it, folks. That is our episode all about these wonderful Cryptanthus bromeliad. I am so hoping that I've inspired you to try these gorgeous, amazing plants out. Definitely easy to grow and just so wonderful to have within your collection. And I really do hope that you guys liked this video. And if you did, please be sure to like, share, and also subscribe. Also, make sure you turn on that bell notification so that you guys will know exactly when I do post a new video. And if you haven't already, please be sure to join me on my Facebook and also on my Instagram under My Orchid Adventures. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to share my love, my passion, and my plants with you. I will see you guys later and I'll also grow with you guys later as well. Bye bye for now. Mwah.